Talk shop with us. Talk shop. shop. Welcome to the talk, talk shop. shop. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, why talk is shop. so white? Okay. So, anyways, welcome to the talk shop. We're having a really good time. This is our um shop where we talk. Yeah, and we talk shop. Yeah, in the talk shop. And then we show you. And what then we, talk and about. we show you who, and, and we bring people on. We talk to people. Yeah. In. Well, we're in the shop. Yeah. They're in the shop on Zoom. On Zoom. Yeah. Because right now we don't want them to get all sick and stuff, so we just like, hey, how are you? Oh, good, okay. No, nope. won't get sick because we're always together. So you know, it's like families that live in the same house and stuff. So we're good. No, we get sick of each other sometimes. Yeah. But no, oh, you sick of me? No, <laughs> no, I'm that, that just, is not possible. I'm just joking. She's just joking. Um, so the purpose of the show has been, there's whatever it is you might do in the arts or you want to promote. Or if you have like a YouTube channel or something. Musicians, actors. Comedians. Comedians, theater groups. Artists, um, like painters. Painting artists, sculptors, whatever it is you might do in the arts or you want to promote. Or if you have like a YouTube channel. Or, or hey, if you want to come on here and say, I love you guys. We oh, yeah. are, you guys were the best. We're going to book you first. You'll be the first one we call. Actually, no, we do have. Our very first interview that we under just, our belt. We just filmed it today. Don't so leave me hanging. We're excited. Um, we actually what? Talk to the hand. High five. Oh. We actually uh got to interview Jason Strain, who is the president of the board at the Diamond Valley Arts Council, mm -hmm. um, which used to be located here in Hammett, which is where we it used to be our home. It used to be yeah. our playground, but not anymore because COVID sucks. Um, like many businesses, it had to shut down um, a couple months after the pandemic started just simply because it was a live venue for theater and music. And there, no, that was thing. no more. No. So <laughs> it was a big blow to us because we had been there almost a year. Um, anyway, Jason's awesome, and he he has a lot of information, and we wanted to have him on first because he was our first, um, what do you say, cheerleader? Yeah, supporter. He, he was our supporter. He, yeah. be he believed in us. He gave us a stage and a platform, and he said, dance for me, <laughs> or perform, or whatever. Bring your people in. He was like, entertain me, girls. <laughs> so here he is, everyone. Mr. Jason Strain. Jason Strain. There he is. All right. Let's see. You're not muted. Can you hear us? I can hear you now. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Hi, Jason. Hey, how's it going? Uh, a long time. I know. I know. Well, this is our talk shop. Yeah, we like it. Shop. Cool. We shop. We talk. I shop. love it. Talk shop. I love it. And I, you got your, you got your cocktails going. Oh, we got our iced tea. Well, it's yeah, iced yeah. tea. They're we, virgin. Beautiful. Eventually, <laughs> maybe we'll have people here in person, and we can have cocktails. That would Wouldn't be, that be so fun? Super fun, yeah. I, I love it. It looks awesome. Oh, thanks. Well, this is Deborah Dawn's shop where she hoards all of her costumes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> And she actually has cleaned it out like yeah we can actually walk in now quite substantially in the last few months she's telling all my secrets well okay, it looks you know good what? Hey, let's talk about her now i'm proud oh, of you really bad stuff. Oh, thank you. 
let's talk about Jason since we have him here for only a small amount of time. Okay, Jason. Yeah. We're, we, we wanted to bring you on as one of our first guests, actually our very first guest, Jason. You're number one. Oh. Hey, you know, people tell me that all the time. It's usually when I'm driving. <laughs> nice. <laughs> with their special finger they yes. tell you <laughs> um i get so, that too i get that too really <laughs> well you it's know theater people. We're all <laughs> apparently we're we're all number one we are <laughs> i would i would like you to um i mean we know the answer to this but can you tell us can you tell our audience how we Both became of them? how <laughs> we became acquainted with you uh -huh. and, then, and tell us so oh, in other words talk about us talk about how okay. you how we hooked up and then you can talk about do you um, really want me to share how we hooked up i mean well, that, no. that was it's kind of between us <laughs> no no yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we did, i mean i don't want to do all the talking so you talk tell us okay tell us, what is your how i met cammy and deborah dawn story okay. um well i think i think it probably goes back to um when you guys were doing work with i, I know deborah don was doing stuff with the inland theater company so i already knew you and then uh cammy i think uh, i i met you through michael Tennant. i think sure. i may have yeah. met you but i don't remember okay meeting. so that is the time I, I remember meeting you for the first time when she, Deborah Dawn and I were down at the coffee shop and we were talking about um, starting a theater program. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Deborah Dawn was like, well, you know, the Arts Council's right two doors down. So and I know the guy. And so. I know them. So. <laughs> and and that, was the, that was the first time you came in. I thought you came in with Michael Tennant one time and I thought we met through him. Oh. But may, now, maybe I'm mistaken. I kind of doubt that because, you know, Michael doesn't like me very much. <laughs> you know, they're related. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so the, we met you, and that was back in. Oh, it was March. Yeah, that was March. Yeah. 2019. Didn't have much time for the summer show. And you said, um, "Come to a board meeting and pitch your ideas." So we did. And you were and, so great. And that's when the magic started. Yes, we just <laughs> walking into you. You were like, "Okay, yes, come in. Our place is your place. Do what you want." Well, that's. <laughs> That's kind of what the Arts Council is all about, though, is, is support, supporting and promoting arts in the community. And that means uh, helping artists be able to share what they have with the community, as well as let them see um, what's, what's really out there and available to them. It's, it's such a shame in the Valley that a lot of folks don't really realize how many talented people there really are. And to be able to give uh, the artists that avenue and uh, give our community an insight into what's what's really available and uh, some of the great local talent that's so awesome because yeah i mean there's so much talent and what a great thing to actually talking about not being a narcissist be about other people's talent and like <laughs> we want you to talk we want you to come <laughs> for um whatever your talent is and, the, and you have all kinds of talent there dvac like you do the bands you do theater now you do, mm -hmm. what are some of the other things that you do? We do, uh, uh, we do visual arts, um, anything from 2D to 3D. Um, we've done classes for some senior community stuff. Uh, we, we had an extension course with the, with uh, UCR, which is, uh, um, they would come in and it was kind of a did you know kind of thing. Um, everything you wanted to ever know. Uh, so we do little things. Some. Uh, some courses on opera or some on classical or something on uh, that. clay and yeah um, we did we did, did that for a number of years at our old building okay so those are like little workshops and I know you did yep. a children's little workshop too with the Cherlins yeah those are those are kind of the things that that we were all about is and we still are and we do have a program with San Jacinto Unified that it used to be an in-person after-school program for art and since COVID, uh, we've gone virtual with that. So we, we do videos for the kids. And we've been working with the school district on doing an interactive art class going forward as well. So uh, we got some, yep, absolutely. That's we, actually, that I've seen some of those with Jessica, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
That is awesome. That's so cool. Well, and that kind of leads us into the next thing about since COVID, you know, what happened to you? Uh, are we go there and we sing that song by Madonna? This used to be my, my playground. playground. <laughs> yeah, it's very sad. We were very well, sad when D got closed. Uh, what was it? Two months after COVID? Right. Yeah. We, um, yeah. with the initial shutdown in, in March, uh, we tried to use that time to renovate the building and do some things that we always wanted to do. We had improved the stage um, and done all sorts of neat stuff. We, we were planning on reopening because everyone was planning on reopening. Nice. And um, when that second shutdown happened, we had been closed for several months already. And it, we had to take a hard look at ourselves and say, hey, um, right there. That second do we want to continue to drain the coffers and hope that we can reopen? Um, or do we shut down the building, which our overhead was almost 4000 a month. So wow. that's, yeah. you know, rent and utilities and everything else. Yeah, so you're, making, you're not able yeah. to do the events. And if no one can come in, it just didn't make sense at that point. So we decided to go ahead and close the building. We'll regroup. Um, and we started thinking forward of what we're going to do. We started some online stuff in with the school district right now we'll have our very very first online art gallery as of april 1st uh, okay. we've already had online submissions so this will be really cool we did some work on a uh, an outdoor venue up in idlewild mm -hmm. um, we decided that 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 might be a great opportunity for us because once things start to reopen we're still not going to really be able to have a great capacity indoors so we redid this big outdoor deck and everything and um, we're ready to go for outdoor events up there. And then down the hill, once uh, we can get indoors, we'd like to partner with uh, some different folks around town to sponsor events and, and do things. So we won't have that, uh, that uh, monthly payment every month. So we can take that money and roll it into uh, supporting artists in a different new way. Yay. Good job. I'm applauding you for that, Jason. Yes. <laughs> Because we are some of those artists that want to be supported. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have no home. We became homeless. So. Yeah, we live in Derrick um, garage now. Yeah, on the costume this is, shop. This is our home. And we live. Well, at least you can stay warm. There's plenty of things to wrap up in. Well, actually, <laughs> that's true, but yeah, it is freezing in here. But, yeah. you know, I don't know. Um, speaking of DVAC, we, when we were became affiliated with you, we. Um, started a theater company and I think it was kind of a new venture for DVAC in a way I mean I know you had some you had done stuff you had done some some stuff but this was an official program of DVAC I know that the, it was busier around there just from our perspective because we were there all the time we would bring people in to rehearse right. we're always doing something there so there's probably more of a presence with more people yeah and that the reason why we really wanted to pursue that and why it was kind of serendipitous when you uh, approached us was that we had been struggling with how do we expand our reach beyond what we already have. Uh, we, we did some wonderful jazz shows and did some music and things like that, but um, we were struggling to figure out, okay, how do we get out more into the community besides our own membership? How do we deliver on what our promise is, which is to support arts of the community. So that was really serendipitous when you came to us. We were like, yeah, okay, this is perfect. Let's do something different, step out of our com comfort zone. And we're a small board, so we can't do those things ourselves. So we're like, hey, we got two individuals that are willing to uh, step in and do their thing. Let's support them and make sure that happens. And that's what it's all about. And you know, the, the venue is there. So it's like, well, might as well have people in it and doing great things. That's what it's for. It was so fun. I mean, we, we it just, was so good. We enjoyed it. Was the it. perfect partnership. We missed. Well, you guys, you guys drew in some some people from kind of all walks of life in the community too. There were older folks, there were younger folks, there were people that were heavily involved in the theater um, scene in Hemet, and people that weren't. So it was just this really neat mix, and it but added a lot of value. We got to get back to our um, our cabarets. 
and they might change a little bit. We would love to come up to Idlewild or find a venue around town. I have a backyard. We could always do that. I have a stage here. <laughs> so, you know, we need to partner back up. We've got costumes. We've got a couple things yep. we could use. A couple, just there's, a couple. There's tons of options. And now that uh, the COVID restrictions are starting to ease up a little bit now, um, it's looking like uh, we need to do this rather quickly. Yeah, I was going to ask you, that whole Save Our Stages, um, the grant program that they just put out, like federally, to bail out uh, production places that put on entertainment, are you guys looking into that? Are you going to be able to tap in? Yeah, we, we have uh, an individual that's been looking into that for us, and hopefully going forward, um, we, can, we can try to apply for some of those things. But one of the issues, um, a lot of those grants do come with strings, too. So there's, there's like a lot of matching type stuff. And then um, there, it seems like a good idea on the front side, but as you get into them, some of them are, are a little difficult. So you gotta be really careful which ones, uh, which ones you apply for. But yeah, there are, there is, are some stimulus packages out there that uh, um, we would like to take advantage of to start doing some more programs. There needs to be, I mean, cause everybody else gets bailed out, you know, and people forget about the arts. Cammie kept saying during um, the shutdown that, okay, this is a really good lesson for all of us. Where would we be without the arts right now? You know, yep. where would we be without Netflix and the people who made movies and all of our oh, entertainment? Yeah, they, you know, they say that arts are not essential, but it's like everyone is watching a movie now, yeah. like by the hundreds. Yeah, yeah, so and, many new ones. you know, who do you think is making all those? It's artists. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, it's, and, it, and those, and fortunately, those are the first people to, to be impacted because that's the first thing to cut. And there, a lot of folks, when they see an artist, they, they say, oh, well, you know, this, he's not a doctor, you know, he didn't go to school for, you know, yeah. eight he's years to become a doctor. Yeah. And people don't realize the time and energy artists put in to perf perfecting their craft. In How many hours and hours and hours and education? Yeah. Without any compensation most of the time. You know, yep. little or none, mm -hmm. but it's because, you know, it's, it's just, if you're called to be an actor, it's just I, in you, you're, it's, it's a calling. You know, um, because we don't live our lives for, uh, uh, to, to go to a, an office job. We live our lives to do other things and yeah. it's the artists that are those other things. That's right. And you're a musician, right? Mm -hmm. Saxophone. Sex. yeah we've never seen you play actually. i would like to see play. i've heard about it and i've also heard that you can sing but yeah. i haven't haven't heard that either so in the, in the shower mostly <laughs> so you know actually elena is the one that told me that you had a beautiful singing voice she was not in my shower oh good <laughs> <laughs> No, so how does she I know? Feel, that? I, I feel a little uncomfortable that you insinuated that too. I didn't, dude. You insinuated it. We were going, oh no. Uh, she she's caught me a couple of times at the art center uh, when I'm thinking I'm all by myself. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Julia Roberts moment. Yeah. You like uh, with the doors locked. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Jason, I heard, uh, well, I know that you have a, a side venue going on with your new food truck. Yeah. Tell us about that. Tell us about, you, um, have, you have some experience in restaurants too. You told me. Yeah, that, uh, that was my occupation after the air force. And it was actually my first one when I was a kid too. I was a dishwasher at buttons at 14. You remember that place? <laughs> I met my husband yeah. at buttons. I, yes, yeah. I frequented buttons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so because of COVID and everything, I was trying to think of what uh, um, what to do because we, we had been thinking about opening restaurants in, in Hemet and um, it seemed a little more, it would behoove me to uh, think of something that isn't really tied to a brick and mortar. So decided to uh, get a food truck. We've been renovating that and um, uh, working on menu development and whatnot. In fact, uh, I just signed an agreement with our American Legion up in Idlewild. Um, they are in my commissary, so we'll be uh, serving up there for a while and uh, hopefully coming down to Hammond every now and again and, and well, whatnot, I, so yeah. Yeah, it's you should awesome. just come down here someday and drive the truck down and we'll do a whole, whole show on the food and the food truck. That's right, it'll be dinner and a show. We'll, we'll eat the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What? 
talking about here? What do you make? What do you like um, to do? First off, the website's allscratchedup.com. And we call it Scratched Up because it's a scratch kitchen. Um, so um, I change the menu about every week. Uh, one of the main staples on the menu, though, is a Cubano. Um, we roast our own uh, Cuban pork. And it's uh, just absolutely incredible. But uh, yeah, change with the seasons, what's available, what's locally sourced. Um, any seafood that uh, we do is, is local, local cot and all that kind of good stuff. So, all right. So we need to book you for our show. No, we Sounds should, like uh, plan. Uh, you should send us some footage. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll make you a commercial. Yeah. We'll put you on here. Every time we do more interviews, we're going to have like, gonna be like sponsors. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Sounds like a plan. That would yeah. be fun. Yeah. And then you can play the saxophone at the same time. Yeah. We, we want some clips of you. <laughs> I think we you know, need to do like making sandwiches and playing the saxophone at the same time. You know, like we, we were talking about uh, um, being not narcissistic and giving forward. I like to be on the other side usually and I find great artists and I like to support them. So out at the DVAC, out of all the stuff, because you've had a lot of presenters and performers <laughs> and all sorts of, from across the spectrum of people think of an act that really stands out in your mind that you were really impressed with that you really liked the best oh boy that's that's hard because we've had Anything, you had a lot just some amazing people i think one of one of my favorites is probably dennis kaplinger mm -hmm. um he's a a bluegrass musician and he's actually lives in either temecula or marietta but mm -hmm. he's got he's got two grammys and he played on our stage and He's, he's been heard on all sorts of stuff from Family Guy to you name it. And uh, yeah, he came by himself. And he's also been there with his son, Zachary, who's just an amazing musician by himself I, as well. I, I know that I've, I think I've seen, I wasn't there in person, but I, I think I saw it when you were doing the DVAC tonight thing. Didn't you like have it? Yeah, probably. Him? Yeah, I think I remember yeah. that because it was yeah. him and his son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was, and just such a neat guy too. So then your second one would be um, Daryl is a boy that lives in my closet. Yes, and absolutely. You, I, I still hear that. I know I do too. <laughs> Daryl is a boy who lives oh, in my closet. My yeah. <laughs> Did he poop in your shoe or something? <laughs> no, he pooped in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> and it oh, smelled God. really bad. Yes, slippers. Yeah, and it, See, makes, it made it. me really mad. And it made her really mad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't forget the song because she sings it all the time around me. So like, shut up with the <laughs> Oh god. Well, one of my favorites was was um, Charo. No, <laughs> let's not even talk about that. Okay, moving on. <laughs> okay, um, if you had to pick one food to eat mm -hmm. for the rest of your life, like a type of food, what would it be? uh tacos yeah good choice that's a good choice because you could actually put like all sorts of things you in can there. make all kinds of tacos <laughs> yeah oh boy you've never seen a sad person with a taco no it's impossible, no, it's impossible. yeah that's right you know there's uh el pollo loco makes some good keto tacos now i mean if try you're that. into the keto i recommend they're good which some of us have to get into the keto you know i am since covid i go in and out of the keto right <laughs> I'm not sure if that's which how doesn't it's really to work. work, but that's <laughs> what I've been doing. What's question. your favorite color? Blue. Like a pale, pretty, powdery blue. Like a like a dark blue. Like a turquoise. <laughs> like a so, royal. Something, something pastelly to make okay. me feel pretty. Walt. He feels pretty. Oh, Robin's so egg <laughs> blue. <laughs> there we go. Robin's egg. It's that's it. No, I knew it. I almost guessed that about you. Okay, and I know you like movies. Um, what's your favorite movie genre? Um, probably irreverent comedies. Irreverent. I can see that. Such as. Mm -hmm. Can you name? Um, them? I don't. I don't know if I should say or not, but my my favorite new one is uh, the second Borat movie. It's just awful. It's horrible <laughs> in my sense of humor. <laughs> oh, we knew that yeah. about you. you haven't told us anything mm -hmm. but but my favorite movie movie though is breakfast at tiffany's really 
Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Would have thought that. I, I know. Never would have thought I know that. you like the classics though, because yep. when when we were doing the uh, the Christmas show and they had all those different references. Oh yeah. To all the movies, and you knew all the movies. <laughs> um, I have one more thing about you specifically, though. I know something other people don't know. Well, you know it. Um, talk about where are we with the whole sailing thing? With the sailing thing, well, um, I haven't been to the boat in quite a while, and it's clear, though. yeah, yeah, but I'm actually putting her up for sale for now because uh, the food truck's going to take too much time and energy. And I'll get back to that. And eventually, um, I'd love to be down in like Costa Rica and sailing around and someday maybe have a, maybe have a little bar. Someday, someday you'll get there. That's right. I knew we'll, that. I knew that. That it's your dream. We'll come and oh, visit yeah. you. Yeah. In Costa Rica. Oh yeah, I'm so there. We're there for there's, the food and the drinks. There's nothing like sailing. It's amazing. Uh, I, I don't know that I'm a. I don't know if I'm a good sailor. I am. I think that's what I was in my past life. I think that I was on <laughs> clipper ship. I did. No, I had a bad experience in a very small sailboat when I was about oh, 14 or 15. Oh no. Did you, the, I, like, it was a, was it a Titanic moment. No, it wasn't in the ocean, but it was at a campground in this little lake. You know, it's, it's okay. We can still take you sailing. We'll just, what about Bob you and, you know, tie you to the mast. Let's do that. That's a good plan. <laughs> I just hope I don't get seasick. I'm really, I get motion sick, so I don't know. <laughs> But you do you. You do you, Jason. <laughs> um, how, how can we help out DVAC? Is there, are you guys, um, is there any way the community can help you in any way to get sure. us back to where we were? Yeah, you can always go to uh, the dvac.org and uh, we have a donate button right there. You can donate right to us and you can actually say what you want your donation to go to as well. And then as of April 1st, we are starting our very first virtual gallery and you'll be able to purchase artwork from our artists directly online and uh, learn a little about uh, a little bit about all of them and support us that way as well because you can support the artists directly that way too jason thanks jason you got it take care you see you later you okay bye bye now let me see how do we do all this be like that was good stuff jason that was jason that was jason from the dvac Mm -hmm. If you want to get in touch with the DVAC, we're going to, what is it? www.thedvac.org. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't mm -hmm. forget about us. They love us. We've just been sitting here in this garage. Like, remember us. Think of me. Think of me fondly. When we say goodbye. goodbye. Okay, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time on the Talk Shop.